Okay. All right. So this is um, a um, an overview of the Institute of Medicine report and how that relates to um, <clears throat> um, our work today um, in today's workshop. Uh, this work was completed in uh, June of uh, 2015, um, and that and it was chaired by um, a, a committee chaired by uh, Gary Kaplan from Virginia Medicine, included uh, myself and uh, Eva Lee, who's on um, our workshop committee today. Um, the the charge and the approach um, of this committee was was uh, rather complicated. We were um, charged with reviewing literature um, to assess issues, patterns, standards, challenges, and, um, and strategies around scheduling um, timely health care appointments. The second bullet is a little complicated, but basically we were charged with characterizing the variability in um, in, uh, in needs profiles and, implementa and implications for the um, uh, timeliness of scheduling protocols. What that means really is, is that we were to look at the variability in, um, in design, implementation, and outcome from um, access and scheduling approaches. We were also charged with identifying organizations with particular experience in optimizing timeliness of scheduling and charged with organizing a public workshop like today's, and we were charged with issuing our findings and recommendations. We broke our, our report into five chapters. The first was improving healthcare scheduling, um, which was a uh, more of a conceptual piece. And then we addressed issues in access, scheduling, and waiting times, and looked at system strategies for continuous improvement and then we built from best practices in the fourth chapter, and then the fifth chapter was entitled Getting to Now, which was a uh, summary. We used this construct um, to guide our work. And the, the, key th the key pieces here of this construct are that we looked at um, the, the world of access through the lens of, of supply and demand assessment. You know, every day, all day long, one patient at a time, what we do is we use our capacity, our supply, uh, to meet the, the patient or customer demand. And we can either do this well or do this poorly, and we recognize that um, in systems that do this well, they have a balance of the demand for service as well as the capacity to deliver that service. So we use that lens with which to look through um, all these uh, charges. And then that supply and demand assessment and balance leads to performance. Um, unless we have a balance, we cannot optimize um, outcome and, um, and system performance. So using that construct as a foundation, we look through different lenses, patients and families, system strategies and culture, how a culture affects the supply and demand, how, how different system strategies affect this, we also looked through the endpoint, the lens of clinicians and services, and then um, particularly through leadership and organization. We used another construct to guide our work, and this was a seven-step process of seven steps in sequence where we looked at how does access occur, how does scheduling occur. The first step, of course, was the, the initial query. The patient presents with a healthcare question. Can this patient um, access the system 24 hours a, a day, seven days a week? And how does the system respond to that? The second step we labeled as engage. And in engage, uh, we looked at the collective process to answer this query and what kinds of communication strategies that we use at this point. The third step was scheduling. Can the patient easily and quickly schedule a consultation or, or an appointment? Can this be scheduled at all times and through all different modalities? Was it easy and readily available? The fourth step we labeled as prepare. Um, how does the patient prepare for this visit? 
um, how does the system prepare for the visit, um, and how do the clinicians prepare for this visit. This actually is a, a setup for the, our session five uh, tomorrow morning that's going to be led by uh, uh, Rachel Weber and, uh, and, and, um, and with other participants where we're going to talk to some degree about preparation in front of visits that go from primary care to specialty care. The fifth step, step was meet. This is the, um, the, uh, the occur, uh, uh, address the, the, the actual encounter with the healthcare provider or with the system. How does this encounter take place in person, online, or by some other telemedicine modality? The sixth step was ACT. And the ACT was what occurs after the visit? What are the actions that take place? Um, what kinds of um, um, uh, uh, tests were ordered? What kinds of prescriptions were ordered? Well, how do we communicate afterwards? And then finally, we circled all the way back to communicate. How do we communicate in between visits? Is this easy? Does it, um, uh, is it uh, intuitive? We used a, a conceptual reference point, um, patient and family-centered care, and you can read the definition there below. And in the VA, we don't customarily think of patient and family-centered um, care, but we really wanted to bring that perspective um, to our report, um, and we did. Um, patients don't experience a healthcare system alone. They come with a whole a constellation of uh, family issues and, and family support, and we, wanted, and we wanted to make sure that we captured that. The Institute of Medicine Committee findings were interesting. We found that there were multiple decisions made in healthcare, but at the same time, there was limited evidence for those decisions. Organizations and practices and individuals made decisions, but they didn't base those decisions on any kind of data or evidence or experience. They were just random decisions. We found and linked to that was, and of course, substantial variability. So the variability was not only in design, but in implementation and in outcome. If we made a huge grid, we, we would have a thousand different um, um, concepts on one side and a, on the vertical side and a thousand different concepts on the horizontal side in huge variability. We also found significant consequences of those decisions. And those consequences included cost and um, issues, revenue issues, clinical outcome issues, and satisfaction issues. So the decisions that we make um, <clears throat> result in consequences. We also found a lack of system strategies. You know, healthcare thinks it's really different, but it really acts in a, in a certain way. It acts um, <clears throat> in, the, in the way of supply and demand and delay. Um, and its system strategies, you know, including lean and theory of constraints and um, <clears throat> etc., that all uh, allow us to view this uh, dynamic in new ways, but we found that in healthcare, uh, it was very uh, 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 uncommon to see um, organizations that used any sort of system strategy to understand how their their system uh, worked. We also recognized the need to reframe the concept of visit. Um, there's a lot of tension um, in healthcare around visit. In fee for service groups, visits create revenue. And in other groups, visits actually create cost. But we looked at, through the lens of patients and families, that, that, we've, that we recognized we needed to, to reframe that whole concept of visit and face-to-face -face visit, and we needed to uh, embrace different ways of, of accomplishing what we were trying to do with that encounter. We also found that the concept of continuity, um, patient linkage with a specific uh, clinician existed, but there, but there's no clear implementation or understanding of how to implement um, that concept. We found no validated standards around delays, around continuity, uh, pretty much around anything. We found that there were a number of emerging technologies, um, wonderful things on the horizon, but um, a limited embracing of those technologies. 
We found a paucity of leadership, and we found that delays in our systems were ubiquitous and had multiple contributors. So what contributed to delays? What did we find? Well, we found an inattention to supply and demand, an inattention and a, a basically a, 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 a misunderstanding of supply and demand, which contributed a great deal to delays. If we don't have a balance between a measured balance between the demand for a service and the corresponding supplier capacity to deliver that service, we're we're going to get a delay, and there was a um, just an inattention to that. We found a a provider-focused approach contributed to delays. We found substantial variability, again, in design, implementation, and outcome led to delay. We found that outmoded workforce models, not utilizing all the different um, resources that we could um, uh, <clears throat> pull in, contributed to delay. We found particularly that priority-based cues the, the, the myth that somehow we can create a special line where people can cut in line um, is going to solve our problems. It doesn't. Um, it actually makes delays worse. We found that care complexity, reimbursement, reimbursement complexity, and geographic complexity all contributed to delay. And again, lack of system strategies, a lack of looking at delay through the, through the, um, through the lens of um, of, of systems and, and system dynamics really contribute to delay. And again, no validated standards. We did, though, discover in our work some benchmark practices, some groups around the country and some within the VA itself that um, were doing exemplary work. In primary care, we found groups that had um, continuity um, um, higher than what we would expect, and either same or next day engagement. In specialty care, we found uh, waiting times of 10 days or less, and, and many groups less for, for a new patient into specialty care. We found in emergency departments um, instances of 10-minute door to provider time in hospital admissions, uh, and uh, delays from hospital admissions to the emergency departments in less than four hours consistently. And we found that in some organizations, the hospital discharge assessment began immediately on, on admission. We had some recommendations uh, for access to care. Um, we recommended uh, the utilization of system strategies. We need to look outside of ourselves and look at the way that other people um, and other um, um, entities and other enterprises actually look at how systems work. We needed to incorporate that. We needed to, um, to develop supply and demand matching, understand supply, understand demand, understand how to match those two if we want to improve access to care. We um, recommended immediate engagement at the time of inquiry. Don't put things off. Um, we uh, recognized that in, to improve access to care, we needed patient preference to be brought into the equation, and then we needed care tailored um, to patient needs with reliable alternatives to the clin clinician visit. We needed, in particular, surge contingencies. Demand and supply have variabilities, and there's going to be times when demand temporarily exceeds capacity. What kind of a surge capacity, surge contingency, do we have in place that automatically goes in place in order to keep up with variability in demand or variability in supply. We also recommended continuous assessment. Recommendations for leadership. Um, we, uh, we recommended um, um, broadly promoting system strategies. Frontline scheduling practices needed to be anchored in basic access principles. We needed a governance commitment to leadership on, base, on these basic access principles. We needed standards that are proposed, developed, and applied, and we needed patient and family participation in designing, designing and leading change, as well as, a, a same theme, continuous assessment and adjustment. Those were our recommendations for leadership. We learned from other sectors. We learned that other sectors outside of healthcare and some inside of healthcare 
um, had an integrated perspective. They looked at the big, at the whole picture. And in the VA, we're going to have the opportunity to do that or to continue to do that. Other sectors had analysis and measurement capacity. They measured the right, they knew, they measured the right thing. They knew the right thing and they measured the right thing. We needed um, and learned about how to anticipate emerging technologies. And we needed and learned about um, learning um, uh, uh, service excellence. The workshop, our workshop, the Academy workshop today has a number of different tasks. Um, primarily to facilitate a discussion focused on key operational characteristics and functionalities of a scheduling system. So, and we, our, our task is also to look at evolving technologies and adopt the ones that are helpful to us, um, put some aside for a while, um, and reject some. We wanted to, to uh, over the next couple of days, to look at the essential functions of a scheduling system. If we're going to build a scheduling system, what are the essential parts of that design? And that's going to come up in some of tomorrow's um, uh, sessions. What are the phase requirements? What are the steps we need to go through to develop a, a fully functioning scheduling system? We can't jump to the end. There's a, a certain phasing that we need to go through. What are, um, what are the unique aspects of the VA? We need to address, in the next two days, interoperability issues. We need to address user experience and, again, address lessons learned from others. So, if we move from the Institute of Medicine report um, and, and to today's Academy workshop, how do these two things relate? What are the connections? Well, the IOM report, uh, report was far more theoretical. The, the Academy's workshop is far more practical. The IOM addressed access and patient needs, while the Academy will address scheduling and patient needs. The IOM sets the foundation for balancing supply and demand, and our Academy workshop will describe how to enable that. The Institute of Medicine report emphasized continuity in primary care, minimal delays in specialty care, and inpatient flow, and the Academy workshop will enable this. The, the Academy workshop will address unique, the unique VA setting, geographical challenges, interoperability, wide user variability and needs, and the Academy will look ahead towards evolving technologies and potential opportunities for the VA. So that was our report. That's how it connects to the um, to our academy workshop today. We felt that the Institute of Medicine report was really a, a, a great foundational piece uh, for all of our work here. So I'll pause here and see if there's any um, questions. So <clears throat> this is just perhaps a little bit uh, more complicated than it would be if Mark were here. But if there's anyone in the room that has a a question uh, for Dr. Murray, uh, go ahead and, and come to the microphone. Uh, if there's anyone on the phone uh, or on the, the uh, WebEx that, that has a question, uh, voice it and uh, Mark will have a chance to answer it now. Seeing and hearing none, uh, we will, oh, okay, Lisa. <laughs> Happy to wait and give other people a chance to, to speak. So I'm uh, Lisa Lehman, uh, primary care physician and the chief medical officer in uh, the VA New England healthcare system. So Mark, thanks so much for that uh, great overview and really um, setting the stage for the work that was already done and the connection to the work that we're going to do over the next two days. I think that was really, really helpful. I'm curious if you might be able to summarize a little bit more um, what were some of the system strategies that the IOM report identified that really may be helpful for us as we think about um, what are the strategies that we need to implement in our uh, complex system in the VA? Yeah, great. yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, the, the system strategies, we looked at a number of different systems approaches, uh, and Eva Lee is going to talk about some of those um, for today or in tomorrow's workshop. Um, we look particularly at uh, um, um, things like um, lean thinking, theory of constraints, and what we looked at 
was, um, I think the main learnings in summary were um, how do we look at supply, demand, um, the relationship between the two, and how, um, and how delay is actually uh, the result of the relationship between supply and demand. We looked at things like the theory of constraints, where um, if we're going to get a patient to go from primary care into specialty care, there's a number of different um, um, steps that need to take place um, in that transfer. And like, for example, we may need to get um, a number of different laboratory tests or a number of different uh, inquiries for that on that patient's health. And we looked at, in the theory of constraints, which is a system strategy, we looked at this the system can, pro it can go only as fast as and can only be as successful as the least available of those steps. We cannot complete that work until the least available of, of, um, of those steps occurs. So we looked at that. So that showed us that, that we have to reduce delays in every aspect of our work. We looked at um, queuing theory. And you're going to hear a lot about queuing theory tomorrow. Um, and about how um, lines and priorities um, create more and more delays. So we, we explored a number of different um, approaches around queuing, scheduling, particularly um, queuing theory, lean, and theory of constraints. Thank you so much. Any other questions either in the room or on the phone? If not, thank you, Mark. That was great.